Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And you already know, as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Indeed, you made it possible that we reached part 50 in this series. I'm pretty sure this is the longest series I made to this point. And the reason for that is of course, in Real Analysis, we have to cover a lot of topics. For example, there's a lot to talk about the Riemann integral for step functions. And in this video, we will talk about the properties the integral has. Here, please recall, we have already showed in the last video that for a step function phi, the Riemann integral is well defined. Indeed, the integral stands for the orientated area between the graph of the function and the x-axis. And we use this symbol to denote it. Now, what you should see here is, this symbol describes a map. The input is a step function phi and the output is a real number. So the area that comes out here could be positive, could be negative, could be zero, but the important thing is, it's a real number. Now, on the set level, this means on the left hand side, we have the set of all step functions and on the right hand side, we just have the real number line. And for the set of all step functions defined on the interval a, b, let's use a capital S. And then let's put the interval in parentheses. Now, this map has some nice properties we can immediately prove by using the definition of the integral. Indeed, to summarize these properties, I can immediately tell you this map is a linear map and it's also monotonic. And what this exactly means, I show you now. So let's put these properties into a proposition. Now the first thing is one part of the linearity and it holds for every real number lambda. Now with this lambda, you are able to scale the step function phi. Hence lambda phi is a new step function. However, the result here is that the area of the scaled step function is almost the same as the original area. Indeed, we only have to scale the original area. So this shouldn't be a surprise at all if you just think of the rectangles. Nevertheless, you should remember a scaling factor I can just pull out of the integral. In fact, such a property in mathematics we usually call homogeneous. Okay, then the next property is not about scaling, but about adding two step functions. So let's call the second step function psi. And now we can just add both step functions, which means we have phi plus psi. And as before, this is not hard to show, this gives us a new step function. This means if you know some linear algebra, you already know this set here is a vector space. However, for us it's only important that we now can calculate the orientated area again. So we want the integral of the new step function. And also here, we can use the integrals of the original step functions. More precisely, we get take the integral of the first step function plus the integral of the second step function. So what you can remember is we are allowed to pull out this addition sign here. And this property in general in mathematics we call additive. Also, you should remember these two properties together we usually call linear. Hence, now only the monotonic property is missing here. Indeed, this property is not so complicated and we formulate it again with two step functions phi and psi. So now we assume that one step function is always above the other one. So psi is always bigger or equal than phi. So this should mean that the orientated area of the rectangles is always larger for psi. And hence, if we sum them up, we have the same inequality for the integrals. In other words, this order for the functions is conserved for the integrals. So remember, when you increase the function, you would increase the area as well. And this property we then call monotonic. Okay, then I would say, let's talk about the proof of this proposition. Indeed, it's not hard to prove these statements and indeed the proofs all look similarly. Therefore, maybe it's sufficient here that I only show you the second part. 
So then let's immediately start by visualizing the two step functions phi and psi. For example, this could be the graph of the step function phi. Which means, as always, we are able to choose a partition x0, x1 and so on, and numbers c1, c2 and so on. Now a similar visualization I can also give you for the step function psi. For example, it could look like this. Hence also here, as always, we can choose a partition, but now we use the letters x tildes for this. And on the y-axis, I would use d1, d2 and so on. So you see, with these sketches, we have already fixed some notations here. In particular, we have a partition p1 that works for phi and a partition p2 that works for psi. Now, of course, in order to calculate this integral here on the left hand side, we need a partition that works for both step functions at the same time. And indeed, we've learned in the last video how to do this. We just define p3 as the union of p1 with p2. Then we just get a new partition and maybe now we use double tildes to denote it. So you should see here, the idea is now that we have enough points such that all the splits we need are included. The nice result here is, now we can choose the same partition for both step functions. And with this, we are able to combine both integrals. In other words, we can calculate this and this integral with p3. And then adding shouldn't be a problem. As an additional remark here, you should note that now I use capital N to denote the number of points in the partition. In general, we would have more points than before, but for the calculation, it does not matter how many we have. Therefore, if we want to calculate the first integral, we have to sum j is equal to 1 until we reach capital N. Then inside the sum, we have the value cj times the difference of the points. Here, maybe the enumeration of the value cj has changed because we added more points. However, the possible numbers that could come out don't change at all. Therefore, for the new partition p3, we call them cj again. Now, in a similar way, we get the same result for the integral of psi. The sum looks similarly, but now we use the values dj again. Now, the important step here is that now we are able to put the sums together. So we can write the whole thing just with one sum. This works because here x tilde tilde is the same in both sums. Therefore you can write it as cj plus dj times this difference. However, now here you see we add the values of the functions. And indeed, in general, if we do this for each point on the x-axis, we get the sum of the two functions. So this means the sum here represents the area that is given by the sum of the two functions. In other words, here we get out the integral of phi plus psi. And there you see, this is exactly what we wanted to show. Indeed, here you see the whole idea what we have to do to prove the properties of the integral. And these properties can be used for the general definition of the Riemann integral. And that's what we will do in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there. Bye.